it's hard because there's no markers on this banjo. It's got, well, no, I mean, it's got these, what they might, what they used to call professional frets on the side. Y'all see these little dots? It's got those, and that just sort of marks where a fret was. But it doesn't really tell you which one you're at. So I have a hell of a time finding the 12th fret going back and forth. Really neat banjo. This is a patent 1867 Dobson. These were made up in New York. Um, and there's sort of some, you know, nobody really knows for sure. I was reading in, in this book back here. This is called America's Instrument, the banjo in the 19th century. This is a great book. Um, James Bowman and Philip Gura. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I never met uh, Gura, but, I, but I've met uh, James Bowman. Anyhow, they go into great length in this book. Um, about, I wonder if I can lean that back up. They go at great length in that book about the, um, the rivalry between S.S. Stewart and the, uh, and the Dobson brothers. Uh, so this is a Dobson banjo. Uh, they were purported to, to make this, but there's a lot of, um, like I said, there, there's no proof, there's no evidence of there ever having been, as far as I know, if I read that correctly, there's no proof of there ever having been a Dobson factory in New York. So, and a lot, a lot of these Dobsons are very similar to uh, what we know came out of the Buckby factory um, in New York as well. Um, so there's a lot of people think that Buckby just made all the Dobsons banjos, or you know Dobson, you know maybe I forget which Dobson it was, George Dobson. There was like five brothers or something that all played. Um, but they, so people think maybe Dobson made a few, but he contracted most of the work out to Buckby. I think that's probably the case because you see a lot of similarity between between them. Um, a lot of people see these and think it's an English banjo because these were sort of copied in England um, but but this is this is this is a New York Dobson it says right on the heel um, and actually the stamp is not that legible but it says something about Dobson's patent July 16th 1867. I wonder if Y'all can see right there. And that's the stamp. It didn't take too well. Really cool. I think this is probably the original hide on it. Let's look at the back. This looks to me, I'm not sure what's going on. I think the whole banjo is veneered. And I want to say that's that's rosewood veneer. I really don't know for sure. It doesn't it doesn't jump out and strike me as rosewood, but maybe maybe it is. Also the fingerboard is veneered with the same material. Check out the peg head. The peg head is, is actually got pieces, like these ears are pieced on the side. Really nice, nice cool banjo. These are cool. I've seen a few of these. This is the first one I've ever actually got to play. Um, you know, S.S. Stewart just hated the Dobsons. Um, and of course he proclaimed far and wide um, and, and took out all kinds of paid advertisements and editorials um, claiming that his banjos were superior, and you know, Stewart's banjos probably were better, better than this, because this is kind of you know Stewart called them tubs. Um, you know, John Cohen also says these things were tubs, and you know. It's a little bit dull and muted sounding. It's kind of, but it's not terribly heavy. It's not as heavy as it looks, but it's kind of muted. But you know, back in those days, that was kind of how a lot of these banjos sounded. So this thing knew, and in the 18, late 1860s, um, 1870s, this was probably pretty hot. And I've heard that these were people, tons of people owned these and played these. And I do think it does sound better if you finger pick it, you know. sound better finger pick but you know as I get older and play more of these things I'm starting to think that almost any banjo sounds better to me finger picked you know I love the old overhand 
you know, wrapping, frailing style. It's great. Um, and I always do it on certain pieces, but a lot of times, most banjos, I think, just sound better finger-picked. These tuning pegs are not the original tuning pegs. These are later patented tuning pegs from at least the late 1880s. This is, this is a much newer one that somebody's installed. It's like a, just a Grover black peg fiction peg. But yeah, these, these were put in in the 1880s, 1890s. That what originally would have been on this was just was a tapered friction peg fiddle tuners, I think. I think the neck is mahogany. Just a really neat banjo. It's not really missing anything. This might be the original tailpiece. I'm not sure. If anybody knows, holler at me. One more thing I want to talk about on this banjo is I, I, I strung up brand new gut strings on this. A guy was, was kind enough to send me a free sample of these um, Academy strings. These are nice heavy gauge gut strings. They're super heavy. I think the third string is over a millimeter thick and it has instructions about how to tie it on the back. But these are nice. This is, this is a new string company. It says Absolute Perfection from Gamut Musical Strings. And the web, uh -huh. there's a website on here, gamutmusic.com and a phone number. So if y'all want to order a pack of these strings, these are good, good gut strings. Um, and like I said, the ones that he sent me, boy, these are heavy gauge strings. But anyhow, I wonder if maybe I'll play another piece on this. sounding banjo, nice quiet banjo, really, by today's standards. Um, one more thing I just realized, these frets, I don't think these, these frets are clearly not original, because like I showed you, it has these, it has these uh, professional fret, you know, inlaid fret markers on the side here, and they're in different locations, so I think that this was fretted probably in the 1880s, maybe at the same time these tuners were put on, they slapped the frets on here, and they, they corrected the, the intonation on it, it looks like. Because, like, you know, you just saw me. It's got pretty good intonation on it. It plays well up the neck now, and these frets are good. Anyhow, um... I don't want to keep you on any longer on this. I just thought this this is just really neat. I love this 1867 patent uh, banjo. So probably from you know early 1870s or so. Dobson, check her out. One more swoop. I just get a thrill out of looking at something like this. This thing's got so much character. Look how black that head is. That's you know 150 years or whatever of tobacco smoke and wine being spilt on it and just sweaty fingers and, and forearms on it. <laughs> it is just really, really cool. Love something like this. Okay, everybody. Thanks for looking.